So uh, welcome to this talk, which is about a facility which uh, entered in, into the kernel last year in 5.19. Uh, it's called Uring command. While the title also says that it's about revamping IOCTL, but it's a bit more generic than that. If you are looking for building a new user interface uh, for whatever reason, perhaps this is something that you might want to consider. I'm Kanchan and uh, Anuj is the co-speaker, but unfortunately he could not make it. So yes, let's start with uh, uh, maybe uh, roughly dividing the, the user and kernel communication into two categories. The first one is what we do with well-defined system calls and that's what is uh, I label as structured communication and whatever else that, that does not fit into those well-defined system call that, that goes into the bucket of unstructured communication. And we have that because building syscall usually requires creating generic abstractions. Uh, so you may be writing some kernel component which could be a driver or could be a file system or could be some other kernel component. And at times you might want to communicate with the users, user, uh, user space application. And if what you are doing is, is, uh, is well known or has been done before, you can use existing system call and things are okay. But then if you are doing, doing a bit specialized operation, uh, you may find it a bit hard to make it generic and, and that's why it, it becomes a bit hard, hard to create uh, new syscalls. IOCTEL could be, it has been used as one of a way to, to basically represent the communication which is otherwise hard to be shaped as a generic API. People like it for some reason and people dislike it for other reasons too, but maybe that's, 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 that's not what we are going to talk about today. Uh, if you look at the communication, uh, this is, this is uh, at the kernel level, you, you, you start with, uh, Encoding your your interface into a into a command, you define a opcode for that, which is just a number, and and your kernel component would would is supposed to implement something called unlocked IOCTL uh, callback. You could see it in the right hand side, and then whatever you do inside it, that's going to be your your uh, your command specific operation. And as far as application is concerned, application can use this particular opcode and it can supply that using this IOCTL, which is which is a system call over here. Once this is done, once the, the once the, the, the whole execution is over, your your results are 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 also available. Generally, this is seen as a as a blocking operation, synchronous operation. Now, if you look at how how widely it is used at this this point of time. So if you try to search for this keyword unlocked IOCTL, you would see that there are around three, 303 providers at this moment. Uh, and that includes all kind of drivers, file systems and, and stuff. But of course, these are only the number of providers, right? Uh, in terms of number of IOCTLs, if you want to count that, uh, that's roughly at this point, 6384. So, so it seems that, that, that while we have uh, system calls, but but they had all there has always been to to communicate in a way that that wasn't imagined before. And if if that's true, and if it, I mean if, if that remains true uh, down the line too, uh, you may feel the need to I mean think of maybe using IOCTL. But then if you do that, you cannot expect efficiency. And that's that's the that's because it's semantic wise it has it has always been. Uh, seen as a uh, blocking call and uh, uh, one more thing which happens is that while you do this you you end up doing copy from user and copy to user um, and and yes so so these two things are 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 exactly the kind of thing that our Uring loves to get rid of so uh, now before before we we go about uh, what is the alternative of it in IURing? Uh, let's see some fundamentals of it. So IURing, if you look at this particular uh, figure over here, 
uh, the left hand side you see a, a figure here uh, IU ring is operating at the boundary of user and kernel space so similar to VFS you can think of uh, it's providing the scalable asynchronous infrastructure at that boundary uh, works for storage work for network IO2 and communication backbone here is is that that you you go about creating uh, kernel creates uh, ring buffers which are shared with the user space application and that's how you do the communication and um, efficiency is 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 the core core part of the thing so yes it 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 goes uh, at length you know as far as reducing the number of syscalls are concerned and those copies are concerned few syscalls are you ring setup are you ring enter are you ring register but but there are so many knobs that you might want to know and if you look at the the communication protocol um, so uh, you start i mean application start by by setting up a ring and when it sets up a ring you you basically get something called submission queue a ring buffer and you also get something called completion queue and and within within this ring now you would want to you would want to submit your command so what you do is that you you fetch a sqe you you populate it with your command specific operation it could be read it could be write it could be anything else for that matter and you can repeat this whole process you can pick one more sqe and if you are doing it what you are doing is that you're trying to batch and then at some point you you want to you want to tell to the kernel that i have i have prepared these many commands or one command and once when you do that you're going to be calling something called i during submit so that that basically corresponds to step number three if you look at look at the code here uh, and and then yes you have submitted now at this point of time kernel will do you you, you know i during will do its job it's going to be calling uh, whoever is implementing the read write or uh, that particular specific operation and as an application, you, you don't care about it. At some point, when you care about it, you, I mean, you would want to look at the completion. So you would say that now I want to look at the completion. So you will fetch a CQE from the ring. So the step number four, while it looks like serial, uh, it doesn't have to be serial. You choose when you want to do it. And when you get a CQE, uh, you hear what, what we have done here is that we are waiting for a completion. And the moment we, we, we get a CQE, we look at the result and then we come to know what happened to it. So here, um, CQE result is telling whether the read got failed or passed. And once that is done, you need to do something called um, I, I during CQE scene. By this, what you are telling is that I'm done with this particular CQE. I no longer need it. So this is, this is the uh, the existing communication protocol and this is uh, this is you can think that this is generic this is for any uh, IU ring operation by the way if you if you develop question uh, at this moment I'm happy to take those um, so uh, continuing the basics here so um, let's 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 talk about what are uh, what could be two ways to turn a synchronous operation into a synchronous operation? Uh, and I have labeled them as first one as pseudo async, another one is true async. Um, what I mean by here is that the first one is about you, you have a synchronous operation and in order to turn it into async, you, you decide to do it, um, you, do, you decide to upload this to a, a separate thread. And when you do that, you 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 start giving the impression that the whole thing has has become async and actually from some meter point of view this is how it is and the advantage of this scheme is that most of the operations can be turned async like any any of the existing syscall which is sync this can be turned async but the the problem here is that this thing is not going to scale uh, because yes you you you, you need um, for every call you 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 are you you you, you basically require uh, uh, require a thread and, and it's just about you know shifting the responsibility when we uh, when we are talking about true async so this is about not using any worker or thread this is actually about decoupling the submission from completion so in this case uh, we have to submit in a way that the submitter does not have to wait 
this is fast scalable but yes this requires a bit more work if you if you if you go down this path now which model are your implements out of these two uh, the answer is both so the first one is is not the default mode i mean uh, Iuring tries to do the true async first, and if it, if that doesn't work in some situation, it can fall back to pseudo async. And for known blocking operation, like things like imagine if you are if you are doing f sync or if you are doing mkdr, if that's what you want to turn async, yes. So if if this is in uh, known blocking operation, so right from the beginning is going to be using uh, a worker thread to execute that operation. Now, this is existing part. Now, you know, when we are talking about async IOCTL, we can choose one of this model. And if you go with the pseudo async, yes, uh, it would be a bit easy. But then uh, those problems would be there. So at this point, the attempt is to aim for efficiency and, and pick the true async model. And that's what Euring command uh, tries to do. So. This is also known as Euring pass through. So this is a generic facility to attach any uh, Euring capability to any underlying command. So any uh, Euring capability is important. It's not while I'm talking a lot about asynchronous thing, but this is not the only capability that our Euring has. There are other capabilities. Uh, I listed some of those: uh, submission batching, submission offload completion polling, registered file, registered buffer. So all that is really possible. And it's about at attaching all those to any command. Now, command providers, of course, it remains the same. We saw so many providers of IOCTL. So, so here, I mean, those are very much you know, eligible. Um, so it, uh, whatever the, the command provider is, it needs to collaborate with the IURing uh, to implement non-blocking submission and the completion. If you look at the user interface, um, so uh, you have to start, you have to use a new opcode called iuring op uring command that's gonna go into SQE. This is this is just um, like the way you uh, use iuring op read or write. Um, this is the new thing that we have to use. Um, the interesting piece here is that the command that that you that you need to uh, supply. You don't really have to allocate it externally. You can get it from this SQE itself. So if you are using regular SQE, you will get 16 byte of space. This is a free space that you can use. You can think that you don't really have to do a malloc and you are having a memory. If you are using, if you want more than that, you say that I want big SQE and then you will get 80 bytes of space. Big SQE is one more facility uh, a facility that got, got added along with this. So, so both, uh, both got developed together. And uh, yes, so as an application, you will place your command inside the SQE and IURing doesn't care much about you know, what is placed inside it. Uh, this is similar to IOCTL that way. Uh, so your application will, will, will supply the provider specific opcode into, into the command the OP, and that is all. And as far as result is concerned, so yes, as you saw in the example, normally result arrives into CQE, and, um, and that's, that's the case now also. But then you saw that uh, in the CQE, we had, uh, we had the space for one result. There are cases when um, when kernel want to inform or tell more than one result. And if that's the case, you want to say that I want big CQE. And that also got uh, added, the whole infrastructure got added along with this. So big SQE, uh, if um, if you want it, you will have to supply a flag called IU ring setup SQE 128 while you are setting up the ring and that's what it is about. And this is helping with zero copy submission. If you are doing it, you don't really have to do copy to user. The big CQE is, uh, is um, you, can, you can ask for it by setting up the ring with IU ring setup CQE32. And this, is, this helps for zero copy com uh, completion. 
if you look at the right hand side picture i think that's what we talked about here this is a uh, this is a kind of a loose mapping so if we translate the ioctal into this scheme uh, the fd goes into sqe uh, the, the the sqe is represented in the green, green color the opcode will be iuring op uring command the provider uh, specific opcode which is opx for ioctal that goes into command op and the actual command that goes into into sqe as you can see over here and if you want uh, more space, you will ask for big, big SQE. And I think the right hand side is about CQE and uh, the first result go goes into regular CQE. And if you want more, you can ask for big CQE. So that was the, the application or user interface, but Yes, I mean, if you are if you are writing a kernel space component, you 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 might want to know how how would you communicate with with the with the IU ring. So this is the second part of it. Uh, this is how this this is relevant if you are if you are a kernel space provider and you need to communicate to IU ring to implement uh, op, yeah, your operation this way. So the command provider uh, is expected to implement uh, a new callback called Uring command. So uh, you can see in the struct file operation where we had unlocked ioctal, now we have something called uring command. And uh, iuring, of course, iuring would be the first one to, you know, when we are talking about submission, iuring would be the first one to, to receive the SQE. So what iuring does is that it prepares uh, something called struct iuring command. That's a that's an internal structure that it prepares out of SQE. And this structure is used for all the communication between uh, IU ring and the, the, the kernel provider. And if you look at this particular flowchart over here, so IU ring invoked the provider using the Uring command callback. Now pro your, your provider will, will do its, its job. Uh, it, will, uh, it will try to submit the command or do whatever it does. And once the submission is done, it will say that I'm done by, by returning this particular code called EIOCBQed. And that's, that, that's all about submission. And at some point, uh, you're, you are done with the completion, so you, will, you need to inform it to IURing by, by calling this API called IURing command done. And here, again, you are using IURing command uh, and two results you are able to return. So this is... Uh, this is the, the, the simplified communication model. Sometime you would want that uh, if you are a provider and if you want your completion need to be need to happen in, in a task context. So there is another API called IURing command complete in the task uh, and you can use it. You can provide a callback function and that particular callback function is, is guaranteed to be invoked in the task context. So this may be useful at times Now let's look at who, who, who are the people who are using it in the kernel at this point of time. So, uh, as I said, it, uh, this, was, uh, this was added in the kernel last year. And uh, NVMe driver was, was uh, it was developed, I mean, it was changed, I would say, extended to use uh, the Uring command uh, along with the whole interface. So uh, NVMe driver already had uh, IOCTEL based pass-through operation. Uh, so you could see, uh, I have shown in the right hand side, NVMe NS care FOPS, and if you look at dot unlocked IOCTEL, so this is how uh, the pass-through operation used to, uh, used to happen. Uh, here you see that now it has uh, Uring command callback too, so this is this is the NVMe uh, Uring command pass through. What this enables is that any NVMe command, which may be beyond read and write, uh, can be used efficiently. And particularly in NVMe, if you if you guys know you uh, you know that NVMe is 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 um, there are newer ways to interact with the storage. Uh, so so this problem of uh, coining new system call is 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 there. It's it's very much present over there. And the second the second collaborator or the second user is the U block driver. Uh, this uh, was 
also developed last year. It used Uring command from the ground up. If you look at the right hand side picture over here, you do not see any unlocked IOCTEL here. It never used uh, IOCTEL. All the communication it did uh, with the uh, with the Uring command. Um, and at this point of time, uh, Fuse is looking at using this, and in the networking side, sockets are looking at using this. So there, 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 there are discussions happening, and we might see something down the line. Now here is a quick example uh, of uh, turning. This is for NVMe. So on the left hand side, you see a quick example of IOCTL pass through. Uh, we open the NVMe device handle, and then we call IOCTL. And here we use um, IOCTL code called NVMe IOCTL IO64 command. And that's it. I mean, simple, right? With the Uring pass through, yes, code is bit, bit, uh, bit, bit more. Again, you open the FD, uh, you set up a ring. This time, you ask for big SQE and big CQE by specifying these flex. Then you get you get a SQE. I think important point is 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 that within the SQE, I think I wrote a comment over here that you extract the command from the SQE, right? You don't really have to allocate it. And this command is is this command uh, for NVMe pass through it requires 80, 70, 72 bytes of space, and and yeah, it's uh, uh, it's it, it can be it can be you know uh, in this case it's like freely available. You prepare it, you submit it, and once you receive the completion after doing a Uring wait CQE, you can you can examine both the results. So NVMe really required um, big SQE and big CQE in order to do it efficiently. Now, as I said that uh, there are other capabilities in the IURing which, which, uh, which, which are available to the other operations. So, uh, Uring command uh, can, can, uh, is, is also able to leverage that. So, once this facility is, is called fixed buffer in IURing, so um, this particular facility is about reducing the per IO cost of uh, mapping the buffers and unmapping those. So um, there is something called IU ring register buffers if you look at the right hand side. So you can register uh, your buffers upfront. If you have got N buffers to do the IO, you can register them upfront. And if you do that, um, during the IO, you can actually use those buffers. You can specify the index uh, for any of those buffers. And uh, the result would be that you will be having uh, slightly better uh, or a lot better depending on you know how your workload is, uh, efficiency and the reduced CPU. And this is available for regular read and write operations. For Uring command, also this is added. And the interface is, uh, the first part remains the same. Application is going to register the buffers in the same way. That part does not change. Uh, the part that is new is that in the SQE Uring command flag, you can specify something called I Uring Uring command fixed. If you do that, uh, you will start using this particular capability, uh, and then you specify the buffer using the buffer index, some number, and and that's all. And as far as your provider is concerned, your provider can uh, can use this particular premap buffer by by calling this particular new API called I Uring command import in fixed. So this is about, this is like kernel space API. At this point it is named this, but you know that it can be changed down the line. If you want to uh, look at the examples, uh, I added uh, FIO, uh, user space example, and for the kernel space, that's send me uh, example here. Other capability is IOPOL. So, IOPOL is about uh, not waiting for completion, but polling for completion. I mean, if your if your operations are uh, are going to be completed very fast, probably you wouldn't really want to wait for it. Uh, you may get bit 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 better efficiency by by polling uh, for it. You decide not to basically sleep and and uh, undergo the context switches and all. So this is. Uh, this is, is is anyway available with um, with the you know regular operations read and write, but for Uring command also this is this is available now. Application 
all needs to set up IO ring, set up IO pole, and that's all. This is what the application anyway used to do. As far as kernel is concerned, if you are writing a provider of it, uh, submission is same, no change. For the completion, yes, you may have to implement a new callback called Uring Command IO pole. And again, examples are available over here. Now, this is an example of, of uh, uh, efficiency. So what I have shown over here is that um, that uh, for NVMe, um, so NVMe pass through, as I said, that it has been turned into Uring command based pass through. And how it performed after that, this is this is trying to uh, show those numbers. But this, we are not really comparing with IOCTEL. In case of IOCTEL, we know that it does not really scale. Uh, so as such, this is not the best example. But uh, here, this shows uh, the IU ring based pass through is slightly better uh, than IU ring based block IO or direct IO. So uh, we are comparing with 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 a with a uh, much difficult competitor here, uh, not not with a sync pass through. So what you see over here is that it's uh, maybe the last one. If uh, if you look at the last graph. Uh, this shows that the peak performance is 11% better. Uh, these words, I mean, if you say base, by base means this is like, this is the, the performance without having any knobs. Um, base plus FB is the base plus fixed buffer. Fixed buffer capability is, is like hiking the, uh, the speed of both, the, uh, both these things. Uh, and base plus pole is the IO pole that I talked about. Uh, again, the IOPS are improving with that. And the last one is, is like combining all the knobs and see what is the peak performance. Uh, eventually, it, it gives 5 million IOPS and that's the device limit in this particular case. This device is capable of giving 5, five million IOPS uh, for 512 byte random read operation. And, um, and that's, that's possible uh, at this point. If you look at the upstream status, uh, IU ring command initial support was added in 5.19 last year. And along with that, NVMe Uring pass through as a user, as a collaborator was, was developed. Big SQE and big CQE facility was also added at that point of time. The second user, which is UBLK, that, that, uh, that got added in 6.0. And the efficiency knobs I, I talked about, uh, I only mentioned two, but uh, some more are there. Uh, I think I only mentioned those which require a uh, bit of user space change. So uh, those were added in 6.1. And, uh, and I think yeah, we talked about there are other users which are, which are being developed. So, so that's all, uh, that's all I have. Uh, happy to take if you have any questions. Uh, actually, I'm quite new to IO Uring, but I want uh, my impression is that so is IO Uring in overall, in a general sense, is trying to execute system calls actually uh, without, I mean, without the overhead of sys calls and using link buffer. So you request in link buffer and corner somewhat excuse the object in some queues and complex and so uh, I wonder uh, not every score can be uh, converted to uh, IRA ring so what kind of system course are uh, Replaceable by IO rearing. So uh, at, at this point, there there are there are uh, many operations which which IO ring supports, and I think the number is only growing. Uh, it's just that uh, some operations uh, may be more efficient because they have been implemented using true async manner, while some operation may not be that efficient. 
because they they just you know they are they are hard to be converted into like in you know, a true async model. Uh, so yes, you have you have good number of them, and if you have something new or something that that does not really fit into existing system call, this is this is the way I talked about. Uh, this this is something that that may be useful to to build. So either you can think of you know changing your existing system call uh, into async using you know using the regular model, or you can think of using this uh, and and see what may fit. So uh, I thought the the traditional like the octal model it's always synchronous, right? But now I O U ring is asynchronous. So let's say some subsystems they adapted I O U ring and make the octals working with um, make the octals working with I O U ring. But then the user when they switch to use the I O U ring, then they're basically switching from a synchronous model to an asynchronous model. So the application, the layer that calls into that would have to adapt. Is that is that right? Yes, I think if I got your question right, yes, I think if you are looking at IU ring, you are you are looking at moving from from synchronous model to a synchronous model, right? All it's right. just that we didn't really have uh, in our, in in case of IU ring, uh, we didn't really have uh, uh, you know any anything that was that was mapping to IOctal. Uh, if you were a uh, you know if you were a kernel provider existing kernel provider and if you had things which you know which you were doing using IOTL imagine right but now if you care about efficiency and um, so you can think of using this I think you know this is what I'm trying to say otherwise yeah overall IO ring I think if I got your question right this is just about yeah moving from synchronous model to asynchronous model yeah I was just thinking like if you switch then if you just do the simple stuff like you call IOU ring and then you have the same thread to wait for that completion that you don't really save anything. But you have to do a more like higher level refactoring on the application. So are you talking about are you talking about the uh, uh, the first method which I talked about here using a worker thread to turn your sync operation into a sync? Um, can you say that again please? So I think what you said was was about uh, uh, so one of the easy way to convert a synchronous operation operation into async is is just use a worker thread. You can do it as an application, or someone someone in the kernel can do it for you. It can create an internal kernel thread, and it can turn your operation into sync into async. You can do that, but that that's 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 that has scalability problems. You can have uh, you know a finite amount of threads, right? All right. Just to maybe answer the other part of what I thought your question was, if you use IOU ring in essentially a synchronous way, like you were saying, of queue an operation and wait for it, then yeah, you will get essentially synchronous behavior because you've written a synchronous program still. Um, I mean, you do have to write applications in a different way to use IOU ring. Um, You'd mentioned switching ioctals over to IOU ring. Of course, nothing in kernel will switch like that in a way that would break user space because that would not be allowed into the kernel. Um, you could add something to it. I would also take issue with the idea that, I that ioctal is inherently synchronous because there are an awful lot of asynchronous ioctal calls yeah. in the kernel. It doesn't, doesn't have to be that way. Yes, uh, and I think sometimes it is seen as a hack, but yes. At one point, that's how things were. Yeah, I think now this is more clear that if you are using Uring command, the intention, the, the, the whole intention is very clear that uh, we, we really want to do uh, you know a sync model. I think you are right. I think in case of SG operation, uh, I think that's how it is that the, the IOTL is being used in a way that uh, that it is trying to do a sync operation. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at something like the video for Linux interface, right? That's all asynchronous, and it's all done with the Octal. I saw the the IO ring uh, 
interface to the user. Uh, so you will have a, a waiting, I don't remember the, the function call, basically you will wait for the data when it's uh, available and that will be blocked, right? Uh, so when you submit the job and then you, you, you can do whatever you, you want to do. Um, and then eventually you have to wait uh, for the notification from kernel that you, I have new, I have data for you, for you, right? Let me see. Uh, can I go to the the API? Yeah, the maybe step number four. Number four. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what about if my application needs multiple uh, rings, um, and then? Um, in this model, I have to figure out which which queue, which ring I should wait first. Is there anything like a pool? We, so if one ring is ready, so so you in this case you only you only have one ring, and and generally you are not uh, you are not bothered about. I think what you if I got your question right. Yeah. So um, your point was that that. Uh, you have to call I using wait CQ at some point of time. What about if I and, need and you two do, rings? And if you do not really want, uh, sorry? If I, uh, I know yeah, yeah. this is the interface is for one ring. I'm thinking like uh, in the current like pool uh, system call, you can wait for multiple um, uh, FDs, right? So I'm thinking about in some scenario, maybe I my application, I need to communicate with the kernel through multiple rings. So in that case, how should I do the waiting? So if you are having a different ring, you will be using, um, you will be using IU ring wait CQ and you will specify that particular ring as input to it. Um, so if you, if you decide for some reason, if you decide to use multiple rings, yes, you will be, you will be doing that. But 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 it's like this. I suppose that uh, in this particular example, yes, this is seen like a, you know a sequential step. But but you can actually do you can do multiple submissions. And what I have not shown here is something called user data operation in SQE. So in SQE, there's a field called user data. Uh, that is what you use to determine uh, what what is the completion that you you know that that you got. So when you do I using wait CQE. This means that you are okay to wait. If you don't want to wait, IURing provides API, which, which basically uh, allows you to just kind of you know poke or just have a have a have a look at it whether any CQE is available. If any CQE is available, uh, you will get it without having any wait. You 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 know you will not be blocked. And if you uh, uh, if if the CQE is not available, you will. Um, you will anyway get the control back. So the wait problem is sorted over there. But at some point of time, yes, you would want to know uh, whether you got the completion for whatever you submitted or not, right? Otherwise, there was no need to submit, right? And and now, if you look at the CQE, you would or you would want to look at the user data of CQE to know what was uh, what was the corresponding submission. And you map that and you know that, okay, now I receive the completion of this particular, you know, this particular IO. Now this particular thing is, is, is uh, you know, you can apply it on single ring or multiple ring. That, that, uh, that, is, that I think does not matter much. So does that answer your question? Uh, I think uh, maybe part of... Perhaps the part that's being missed here is that having multiple rings would be a rare. You wouldn't normally do that because you can communicate with multiple devices, multiple file descriptors through a single ring. So you can submit a whole lot of operations to many files or many devices all in the same ring. Right? They will go in, they'll come back in a different order. You have to keep track of them, and that's what the user data that he was mentioning is for, so that you can keep them straight. But it would be kind of strange to use a second ring. There's not really a reason to do that. You don't need to. Right. I think uh, the same thing can be seen in the code as well. If you look at SQE FD, so you are populating only one SQE in the whole ring. You can get one more SQE. You can give a different FD into it. 
So this is how uh, multiple uh, devices can be, or multiple files can be operated with the same, SQ, I mean, same ring. It's like, you know, you just have to create, you populate a different SQE with different file handle. Interface here, right? We started with setting up the ring, yep. right? That's the first thing we did, and after that, we we picked a, one SQE and we we decided to prepare it. And when we prepared it, we specify one FD. You can get one more SQE. You you can give a different FD into it. I think that's what what was explained, right? I mean, just oh, now. Sure. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, this is an example meant to show the usage of this one specific device, right? It's not meant to be a general usage example for IOU ring. There are there are more complete examples and documentation out there if you look for it. Indeed, yeah. I pass that back. Uh, so, do you expect that uh, IOCTAL? interface will be deprecated at some point in time and we will completely switch to Uring, no? I, 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 <laughs> I, I do not know that. It's just that I, I, f I feel that, yeah, if, if, you, if you need to develop an IOCTEL and if you also care about efficiency, maybe this is something that you might want to look at. I mean, yeah. So like it's safe to add new IOCTELs uh, to new drivers, for example, in the kernel uh, instead of using Uring in some simple cases. Thank you. Anybody else? So, uh, yeah, I think so. Then, uh, thanks for thanks for attending and listening. And if you have questions uh, down the line, uh, feel free. Uh, once you look at the examples or whatever. So, thank you. So it's more like for IOU ring in general. Um, so I was wondering, um, now that we, so you have a ring and then you have the user space and kernel sharing the same memory. Um, is there any security risk or maybe there's already some ways I, I don't know about. So what if somebody, the user supplied a payload and put it in there into the uh, shared memory and then the kernel starts to pick it up and working on that and then the user can basically change that payload at the same time, would that happen? So as far as kernel code is concerned, so you know, all, all, the, all the code is, you know, reviewed and all the codes, like, you, you can't have a random thing, I mean, you know, whatever, well, you know, all these providers who are looking at SQEs, you know, this is, this is, I mean, all this need to be reviewed, right? People are reviewing it, that's why, you know, that's how, that's how things have been added. So, uh, so I mean, it's, it's not the case that, that uh, kernel is going to pick something which is, which is, you know, which is uh, uh, which is gonna you know bring it down? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what he's saying is absolutely true, but it's it's really just like any other system call interface, right? Where you always have to pay attention to what user space is passing to you, and the kernel will always copy the entire SQE out of the ring, oh, if, at least, and then operate on it so that it is out of yeah, yeah exactly. The, the SQE will be copied, but that's 64 bytes. That's, um, I mean, if you're doing an I.O. operation, that depends entirely on how that I.O. operation is implemented, but it may or may not be copied. You know, if you're doing buffered I.O., it's going to be copied into the page cache or something like that. But, um, but the, command will be, the command will be copied out if, if it is implemented properly. I can just quickly add that for uh, uh, uBlock, there is a separate shared memory for kernel and user space that's used for the I.O. So that only the descriptors go into the ring and then separate shared memory for the I.O. buffers. And that, that, is also, that uh, cannot be part of the directory share. In the yeah, yes. And how, I 
And then uh, if the, the, the panel decided to curl, the, the tape has to be locked. Otherwise, when data is leaving the, the data into the user, in the panel is playing. Yes, if the if user space is changing the memory while kernel is uh, operating on it or uplog is operating on it, that's not good. So don't do that. So that's what it is. Yes, but I mean, you the, so it's I/O data. You're not going to uh, have any control pending on what's in the data. You're just going to move it somewhere else. So the user should, should shouldn't know when I submit the, the, the payload. I shouldn't touch it. Yeah, L leave it alone until I/O completes. Okay. It's the same if you're like writing stuff like to a file. And if you change the buffer that you're writing to the file from another thread at the same time, it's a bad idea.